Hey, what's going on boys and girls? Brad the Guitologist here. In today's video, we're going to look at my signature guitar and we're gonna make a couple little small changes to it that I've been meaning to make for a little bit now. I'm overall very, very happy with this guitar. I love it. Uh, Dennis Ponzio, who made this for me, did an excellent job. Uh, actually, he does sell these as well. I'll put a link down in the description if you want to check these out, buy one for yourself. You can get it with or without all the, uh, you know, the signature stuff on the pit guard. You don't have to buy it that way. But if you just like generally the guitar, you can get it pretty much just like this. In case you did not see the unboxing video of this guitar and the explanation of what the electronics and everything does, I will put a link uh, up here if you want to go check that out. This is the first one he's ever done with this bridge or any vibrato like this. So the route, I think it's just a little bit tiny bit small because it rubs just ever so slightly on the front edge so I'm gonna do a little route to, to uh, get rid of a little bit of my body material right in there where it's rubbing I broke a string the other day while I was playing I was playing exceptionally hard so uh, while I'm changing strings I want to go ahead anyway and uh, do a couple of the changes that I wanted to do so let's dive into this guitar a little further today's strings uh, are brought to you by Diodario they do sell strings in bulk if you want to check those out which I'm using today Otherwise, the strings I'll be putting on here are EXL120, and these are 9 to 42s, and that's what I like on anything that is Fender scale, personally, because it just seems to strike the right balance of uh, bendability on the bends and uh, durability and all that stuff. The other thing I might do on this today that I've been thinking about doing for a little while is actually removing the finish from the back of the neck. I love the way he has uh, done this neck. It, the neck looks fantastic. He's got this dual skunk stripe thing going on in the back of the neck, which I think is just really cool with that flame maple. It just really pops. But I've always been a fan of, and my personal favorite guitars have always had little or no finish at all on the back of the neck or if they did have finish it was just a kind of a very light tongue oil or something so i think this being my guitar i am going to sand off the finish on the back of this neck and i might as well go ahead and do that while i have the strings off so yeah let's go ahead and uh, take this thing apart we'll get the strings off get the neck off and start on it Okay, one of the cool things about uh, this trim system, this is a descendant tremolo on this. The bar comes on and off fairly easily. Once you get it set and locked in where you want it to be, uh, you can always get it on and off uh, very quickly. Put it in this way and then you twist it and it's on there. It won't pop back out until you get it in the right position. Okay, we're gonna get this off. Because, like I said, definitely one of the things we need to do is route this ever so slightly. It does rub just a little bit. I've already talked to uh, Dennis about that. And any future ones that he makes, he's going to widen that route just a, uh, just a hair to uh, account for that. So, shouldn't be an issue going forward. But it is something that I need to fix on this prototype. Now, like I said, this is rubbing ever so slightly. You might be able to even see where it was rubbing here. Yeah, you can see it. Okay, you see right here where it's rubbing? It's like removed a little bit of paint right there. Okay. For those of you who get squeamish, you might want to look away. Oh my God! Okay, it's happening. Everybody stay calm. What's the Everybody procedure, calm. everyone? What's the procedure? Stay calm! Probably would be a little smarter all things considered just to <laughs> get the little Dremel router and do it more gently <laughs> but <laughs> never been one for uh, being gentle every little scar that's on it every little ding I know I know where it came from I put it there and I'll be proud of it, I'm sure, so I'm not worried about it. Okay. 
Yeah, I think that took care of it right there. I'm gonna call that job done. Here's the bottom of the Descendant uh, Companion Bridge, if you've never seen one. Descendant Companion Bridge. And this one is the nine and a half inch radius. They come in seven and a quarter and 12 inch. I think 12 inch is pretty good. I like, I do like 12 inch. That's what she said. <laughs> But I, I kind of wanted that more fender feel, uh, so I went with nine and a half over the seven and a quarter uh, of the old school fenders. The reason not to do the old school fenders is because uh, when you bend on the upper notes, a lot of times on this radius right here, it'll start fretting out unless you have the action set really high, which I do not want to do on this guitar. I want it to be nice and low. I don't like it real, real low, but you know I do like to bend. Um, and if you do it too low, you, you can't get up under the string to bend. I do like my bends. But I think nine and a half is a pretty good compromise. All right, now let's take this neck off and sand her down. What's the worst that can happen? <laughs> so here is the neck off of the guitar. I did notice one thing I want to point out, and it doesn't bother me in the least, but you know, this is something that uh, happens Fender style guitars but with bolt-on necks. This is just kind of a fact of life that you have to live with. You will get around the neck pocket, you will get these little finish cracks. There's just, there are stresses here because every time you pull on the neck, you know, you're kind of pulling on this little sticky outy piece of wood right here. It's like a ledge of wood and you're basically pulling that up and down. And as the neck acclimates also, it's, it's pulling at this joint. So you're gonna get little stress cracks in the finish right there on this other side on strats. This one doesn't have one right here yet. It may develop one at some point, but you'll get them a lot of times on tellies and strats. You'll get you'll get these. It's not a crack in the wood. It's not anything to worry about. I've never minded about that. That doesn't uh, ever bother me when trading an old fender, especially if you're like me and you're just not that precious with it. Like I've already put a ding on this one. I'm not going to gasp on every little ding I put on the thing because like I said it's mine I don't ever on, intend on selling it or flipping it or anything like that if it was a guitar that I bought to flip or something or if it was a customer guitar yeah obviously if I put a ding in a customer guitar like that you know I'd be like oh my god yeah I'd try I'd have to make it right at that point <laughs> but uh it being my guitar I don't care so let's get some probably uh we need some rough grit sandpaper I think to take this off and I'll probably spare you most of this process, but I'll maybe show some of it. And we'll uh, we'll stop right here at this at this point. Kind of like the Music Man point, you know how Music Man does their necks. So with that in mind, actually, I think the first thing I'll do is tape this off, so I don't inadvertently get into anything I didn't mean to get into. And if I wanted to change the neck profile at all, this would be a really good time to consider that as well, which I am somewhat considering. Uh, and if I was going to do that, I probably probably would get out the files and file it rather than sand because the, the files and, you know, rasps would uh, get me there quicker. I think I'm just going to start with sanding first and then we'll we'll feel it and see what it feels like. I really don't like sanding indoors, but I don't have much of an option. Right now it's too cold outside. I'm not going outside I'm doing this. Well, it seems to be coming off fairly quickly. I'm sure if you were to order one of these from Dennis, he would make this like this for you if you wanted it like this. I just, like I said, when we were talking about it, it didn't occur to me um, to ask him to, to uh, not finish the back of the neck, but not a big deal. I'm, down, I'm getting down to bare wood here on some of these parts. There we go. Yeah, it's kind of starting to peel off in little sheets now. And what I may do too is kind of stop at uh, sort of a relic. Um, so sort of, you know, stop here at the heel and just leave it on the heel right here. And then just do it in the middle here. 
Dennis is probably cringing right now if he's watching this. I'm sorry, Dennis. <laughs> We're getting there. I'm gonna vacuum up some some of this. All right, starting to get down to rosewood up here. Yeah, I'm just I'm reshaping it uh, at this point just ever so slightly. It's not uh, it's not anything major. It's just there's a little bit of a D shape in it down here, which I would like to turn into a more of a C, right? Just right in here, and then everything else is pretty good. <clears throat> Okay. All right, so that's the 80 grit. Let's move up. I'll go with 180, then we'll go down to 220, and I think that will probably get us where, we're, where I want to be. I don't need all of that. All right, I'm going to steal wool it. God. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that is that's choice right there. That's fabulous. The more I play it, the more my finger oils will go into and protect this wood. Uh, also in the meantime, if I wanted to, I could actually take animal fats like cooking fat so if I cook some hamburger or something like that, I can take some of that fat actually and spread it on the back of this neck and it will seep its way down into the pores of the wood and, and protect it. A lot of people, you know, oh, you can't leave your neck unfinished. Well, yeah, you, you kind of can. In this case, I am going to leave that right there like that and I love it. The finish begins and ends up here. And it's not a perfect line, but it's, you know, you can definitely see it. And I'm cool with that. I love it. So I may talk to uh, Dennis in the future. Um, any that he does maybe in the future, he could off, off, either offer this as a uh, an option or what, or even just, cha just change it to this. I think this is the better way to go anyway. Saves him time having to finish this part of the neck, so... 
Anyway, let's get the neck back on the guitar and we'll stick those D'Addario strings on there. Okay, so there's the neck back on and uh, it's it's feeling really good. I love the feel of this thing. I actually cooked uh, I cooked some sausage earlier and uh, got a little bit of the sausage grease, whatever, and uh, greased up the back of this neck and it actually, it feels fantastic. It feels really good. Okay, um, cool thing about this, this this bridge, here on the posts of the bridge, it has these little bushings. Okay, there's a bushing here and a bushing on this side that the screw passes through. And these bushings are cammed. They're thicker on one side than they are the other. Like, for instance, they're thicker on this side than they are on this side. And what you can do is you can use that to ever so slightly move the bridge, you know, toward the high E or toward the low E, depending on um, how far your strings are from the edge of the board here. So if you're trying to correct for an issue, in this case, the guitar shipped with the high E a little close to the this edge of the board rather than this edge. So I've got this um, shifted to one side to accommodate for that and it, it does perfectly. So really cool bridge. I like this descendant stuff. Let's go ahead and uh, throw some strings on it. We've got, uh, like I said, we've got this box of uh, Diderio XL, uh, EXL120 B25s. These are nines, nine to forty twos, and this is a bulk box. And it says, I don't know if you've ever opened one of these bulk boxes, but it actually gives you instructions on how to do it. And it's telling me to uh, basically proceed with caution, go slowly. You can go on their website and buy these in bulk like this. And if you're a tech or something on the road, this is probably the way to go. Because then you just grab the strings that you need and just string up your instruments like this out of the box. Let's see how simple this, oh yeah, this is pretty easy. So basically all the strings are just here in a bundle. So uh, silver is the nine. So just grab it one at a time and pull gently. So there's, there's my first string. Another thing that's cool about these descendant bridges, um, you don't have to string them from behind like you do with the fenders. Uh, they have this hole in the front where you actually um, you put it in the large hole and then you just kind of move it to the side and then uh, it's there. All right, so here we are all stringed up and ready to go. It was very, very easy to restring this thing, even taking the bridge off, taking the neck off, taking the tremolo system out. Uh, it was really easy to get this thing all back on here because everything locks on this system. All I had to do was just drop the bridge back in place and it was perfectly like it was before so didn't even have to fiddle with it again so that was absolutely excellent and as for the neck it came out absolutely fabulous loving how the neck feels it's uh just a very satiny feel now instead of kind of it's almost a sticky feel like right here i'm, I'm kind of pressing down here with a certain force and if I press here, it just slides. It just glides right across. Here, there's a stickiness to it. I can even push the guitar, see? Just, just doing this, I can actually move the guitar. But right here, that's impossible. There's no way to do that. It's That's how sleek it is. So I love the feel, the satiny feel of an unfinished neck like this. I actually talked to Dennis a few minutes ago, in fact, and uh, he said, yeah, he'll probably end up making that standard on all the future ones, so if anybody um, wants to deviate and wants a finished neck, they can probably get one, but uh, he's probably going to make this the standard from, from here on. So thanks to Diderio for sending the strings on today's guitar. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and give this thing a little bit of a test. We all know what this thing sounds like if you've been watching the channel, but why the hell not, right?
that's going to do it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, if you have, join me over on Locals for more uh, behind-the-scenes footage and stuff like that. And for now, we'll see you all later.